Hello, Russell Willingham from New Creation Ministries. I'm glad that you could join me for this third video newsletter today. Today I'd like to speak with you about helping couples. And the kind of help I'm talking about is helping couples to become sexually healthy. I think there's a lot of emphasis today in the church on healing and recovery and problem solving, and that's fantastic. That needs to happen. But one thing I think we neglect is helping couples with, how can I phrase it, perhaps good nutrition. Uh, for instance, in the medical field, there's a lot of focus on treating disease, but not as much on preventing disease. Not as much on, say, healthy nutrition, good food. There's a lot on treating cancer or treating sickness or surgery. And I think the same is true with couples even regarding to sexuality. For instance, in Proverbs chapter 5, we read about warnings uh, against adultery and Solomon counsels his son to be careful to avoid the adulteress and not to give his years to somebody else and his wealth to someone uh, who can use up all of his own resources. And then referring to his sexuality, he says that he should drink water from his own cistern and running water from his own well. Obviously a reference to he should enjoy sexuality with his own spouse, with his own wife. Should your springs overflow in the streets, your streams of water in the public squares? In other words, should your own sexuality be shared far and wide? Obviously not. He says, let them be yours alone, never to be shared with a stranger. This is Proverbs 5, 17. And then he says in verse 18, may your fountain be blessed and may you rejoice in the wife of your youth, a loving doe, a graceful deer. May her breasts satisfy you always and may you ever be intoxicated with her love. So, here in the middle of this warning against adultery, we see Solomon giving us some very wise advice. He recommends a fruitful, effervescent, lively married sex life. And what I found in working with sexually broken people over the years is this is oftentimes something that is missing. In fact, I see this as a real problem in the body of Christ. We talk a lot about sexual sin, sexual brokenness, sexual deviance, even sexual promiscuity in the culture, sexual confusion. But we don't spend enough time helping Christian couples understand sexual health, sexual fulfillment, sexual joy, even the sexual freedom we have as followers of Christ. We still seem, in this so-called sexually liberated culture of ours, very queasy on this subject. And we, of all people, should have the most freedom, the most liberty, to talk about sexuality. But still, we're a little nervous. Still, we shy back. Instead, we focus on what's wrong in the culture and what the false messages in our culture are instead of what the true message should be. And I just want to encourage you as a Christian leader who works with people, who loves people, who helps people, help your people to understand the freedom they have sexually. And you may have to go into some specifics. Don't assume that the married people in your church or your parish or your counseling practice automatically know what it's like to be free of sexual shame. In fact, I can pretty much guarantee you that they don't. That they're still dealing with messages of repression and sexual shame or carrying wounds of sexual abuse or ideas that sex even in marriage is kind of wrong or kind of dirty. And we, as Christian leaders, need to set them free from those false messages. And it's really sad how so many Christians, even in marriage, are still struggling under some false burdens and guilt and messages. According to Scripture, it's not what happens inside the Christian marriage. It's everything that happens outside that context. But so many Christian couples are, are questioning and confused and uncertain and shy and squeamish about the sexual joy that they can experience with each other, that it's a very limited and regimented and rigid, strict little box that they have to live within. And yet, Scripture doesn't paint that kind of a picture. The Song of Solomon throws the door wide open to Christian couples to enjoy each other fully and completely and absolutely. It is a veritable sensual feast. And it's not just for the purpose of procreation. Interestingly, in the Song of Solomon, procreation is not mentioned even once. And that should signal us to something. Sadly, for centuries, the church has been pent up in this area. 
And it's because I think of some of the shame that we still carry all the way from the Garden of Eden. And Christ came to set us free from that. But salvation hasn't followed us to our bedrooms, unfortunately. And if we really want to have freedom in Christ, in our culture, if we want to be bold, that needs to follow us even into our nakedness. But many Christians don't know what that's about. And I want to encourage you, first of all, Christian leader, get liberated, get free, Christian woman, Christian man, with your spouse. Let Jesus completely set you free so that you too can be naked and unashamed and in every bodily function with your spouse. Let your imagination soar with one another. And don't be ashamed to risk and to experiment and to enjoy each other fully. Obviously, incorporating pornography into your married sex life would be inappropriate because you're inviting other people into your bed. But what you engage in with each other, the delights and the fruits and the joys and the ecstasies, those are all God-given gifts that you are welcomed to unwrap and delight in. But so many of us are still so uncertain about that. Search the scriptures yourself. Search the Song of Solomon and see where the prohibitions are. In fact, you'll have a hard time finding them. Get your freedom back. Get your freedom back from a repressive religion that is not biblical in the least. Find the joy and the freedom that both the Old and New Testaments offer you. And realize again that the problem is not sexuality. The problem is sexual immorality. And then we can tell the culture that there is true freedom in Christ. And the bondage is not for we Christians. The bondage is for those who take it outside of that context and use it in an inappropriate way. So I hope this is helpful for you. And again, if you need more information or you would like further encouragement or support or ministry in this area, that's why New Creation Ministries exists. Not just to help the sexually broken, but also to help those who are broken or those who are even struggling in sexual health to get greater freedom and to enjoy every good gift that God has for them. I hope this has been helpful to you and we look forward to talking with you next time. For more information, feel free to visit our website. All information is confidential. I hope this presentation was helpful to you today. If you'd like to see other presentations, you can click on the box called self-care and you can also click on the box a safe place and look at other presentations that New Creation Ministries has done. Thank you very much and I hope you find those helpful as well.